Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miss Kelly bringing you greetings again from Lot Middle School. Go Wildcats! And I'm here with my friend, Miss Tammy Carbo from North Mobile. And let's say hey to our Titans out there. Hello and welcome back again, everyone. We are here to talk about another important issue, especially for our students that will be moving from one grade to another, but not just from one grade to another, from one school to another. We know that that can be difficult sometimes. It can even be a little scary, but we want you to be well prepared because being prepared, one, helps settle our nerves and it just makes sure that things go smoothly when we move on to the next school or to the next class or to the next grade. So we have some tips for you today. Take a look. Well, we're going to start with letting you know that we're going to talk about elementary because we know that going from fifth to sixth grade, and actually some of you even go from second to third grade, and it's a transition. So we're going to talk about um, that, and we're also going to talk about middle school, going from middle school to high school. Now, we know that it is a very different year with uh, um, social distancing and the schools being closed and the other issues like that. So we understand that there are going to be some complications with some things that we're going to talk about. And as we go through this, we'll look at those. We also know that many of you were not able to say goodbye to your teachers or to thank them for the things that they've done in your life. So we're going to kind of touch on a few things that you might be able to do there too. So we're going to look at saying, you know, maybe letters or videos to teachers or friends that may be going to a different school or different things like that. And as we go through this, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the things that we can do to be really able to transition because it's difficult to move from one thing to another if you haven't been able to say goodbye. So we're going to talk about that as we go through this today. And I'm sure many of you all will have fun with that one because we love some of our social media platforms that we're a part of now, especially uh, TikTok. So if you are into that or into social media, perhaps make a special little TikTok for your friends, for your teachers, just to say, give them some well wishes for their next level and wherever they'll be transitioning to. So one thing you can do is perhaps to go to transition camps. And obviously, because of the coronavirus and different things that we have going on right now, that could change very much so. So you'll have to pay attention to the news, pay attention to the MCPSS website, pay attention to the schools for which you'll be transitioning to, to see what that may look like. Um, you may not be able to visit that campus um, as early as perhaps had been originally planned to, or some schools may have even transitioned to maybe an online format. Maybe they're doing a virtual tour. So by staying up to date with the MCPSS website and with what your schools are doing, then you'll be able to take advantage of any summer opportunities that they may have to preview the campus or just to get a feel for what the new campus will look like. Some of the things that we're gonna look at when you go to those and the things that are gonna be very important for you to be aware of are going to be, uh, like, like she said, visiting the school, visit it in person or, you know, on a virtual website so that you have an idea of where your classes are going to be and where you need to, to go when you get to school. Um, another one is going to be learning the rules. Do you dress out for PE? You know, some schools you dress out for PE and, and some you don't. Some you're going to have PE, like in high school, you may have PE the first semester and you may not. So those are going to be things, you know, that are going to be really important um, to learn the layout of the new school. You can learn that even in a virtual school. You know, where do you go when you first get there and then where are your classes and how do you work around to get to all of those? Also, find out what a typical schedule of the day looks like. Um, it might be a little bit different depending on what classes you have, but if you know, like if you're on a block schedule or if you're on a seven period schedule or six period, do you have a guided study? You know, what kind of, do they have band? Um, do they have a football team? Those kind of things. What kind of things do they have related to that? Are they during the day? You know, in high school, a lot of those um, athletic events start during the day. You know, your practices start during the day. So you want to know how that works with your school and then to meet new people. And that's going to be a really good thing, um, especially if you're able to go to those camps. But you might even be able to meet some of those people, you know, virtually uh, once you get involved and know exactly where you're going to go to school. So just know that it may look a little different, but you're going to be fine. And you're not the only one that's going through this transition. There are hundreds of other students that are right alongside you. So going from a six period day to perhaps going to block scheduling, you're not gonna be the only one going through that. There will be other students there as well. So let's not get too afraid of that. And let's see what else we can do to be prepared. 
Next thing you want to do is go shopping. So of course, some of you guys got excited because you love to go shopping. And when you're going shopping, this is not just for whatever you like and your favorite pair of sneakers or your favorite pair of jeans. This type of shopping is for school. Now, of course, if you're like me, then you'll slide something in the buggy that may not necessarily be for school, but let's keep that outside mm -hmm. of school. So what do we want to do when we go shopping? Some things we want to consider are the school supplies. Your schools should be sending out checklists. Oftentimes you'll receive these in the mail, but you can also view these online as well to see what you'll need to be prepared for class. So make sure you check those supply lists. We also have had great relationships with some of the local stores, and oftentimes you can pick up a supply list while you're right there in the store. So let's make sure that we are actually looking at what we will need and not just picking up random items. So make sure you have everything that is on the checklist. Also looking for school clothes. You want to check the school's uniform policy. Make sure that you are prepared from head to toe with whatever you need to be properly dressed in uniform. That's from the proper shoes, the proper uh, pants, shirts, belts, what have you, the proper colors and everything. This is where it's going to be important for you to check that school's website to make sure that the things that you are purchasing are in the guidelines of that school. You also want to make sure you have neat and clean clothes and to practice good hygiene. So in the midst of that shopping for all those supplies and all those clothes, let's make sure we have enough hygiene items as well. Sometimes we just have to replenish those things every year, every month. So make sure when we're going shopping, we do have those necessary hygiene items as well. When you're doing things like dressing out for PE, it's especially uh, with, I have high school students myself at home, I always encourage them to have a little pack uh, of a little hygiene care pack, perhaps a, a deodorant or wipes or powder and things like that, that you can put in your gym bag so that, you know, you might be that student that has PE first period. And no one wants to have PE first period, but somebody has to have PE first period. So if you're one of those students who has PE first period or at the beginning of the day, you want to make sure that you have packed a hygiene pack so that after PE, you can refresh yourself and continue on to the rest of your classes. Of course, you want to enjoy your PE class, but you also want to enjoy the rest of your classes for the rest of the day. So make sure that when you go shopping, you include those things in your shopping list. Friendships are very important, in particular, once you get to that next grade level. Now, some of you will go to school with friends that you have had before. Now, an interesting thing this year is some of those friendships that you've had, you have not been able to interact with those students um, for quite a while. So you may not be sure how those friendships are going to, um, how those friends are going to react once you get back to school. And one of the things you have to realize too is as we grow, a lot we kind of change a little bit and a lot of those friendships may change. So we have to be aware and, and ready for that. But anybody that you can interact with over the summertime, you know, on whether it's on Zoom or, or TikTok like she was saying or, or whatever, um, to be able to uh, interact with them, I think that's really an important thing to do to maintain those friendships. Don't be afraid to be outgoing um, and go up to people and introduce yourself um, and be, you know, fun and enjoy it. I think sometimes we get so anxious that what we do is we kind of hide back and put up walls and protect ourselves and, um, and that can be a very lonely place to be. And we're all coming back from this whole pandemic um, kind of lonely. And so we really need each other. So when we get back to school and when things are safe, it's going to be so important for us to interact with one another and to, you know, kind of build a new normal that's going to help us to become healthier and healthier socially, um, you know, as well. The other thing, and we know this happens a lot in middle school, so you fifth graders, you really need to listen to this. Drama doesn't work. That'll get you in more trouble in middle school than anything else. Remember what we talked about last week with conflict resolution? We need to bring that right over into this week and realize that there are many ways to resolve conflicts without having drama. Calling people names, 
um, you know, uh, hitting people, doing those kinds of things, um, it's not, it's not going to work. It's not going to work in middle or high school, and you're going to realize that pretty quickly. So if we can figure out a way to get along, to resolve conflicts in a healthy way, to bring in your counselors if you need to or your teachers if there's any kind of issues that come up, those are really important things that I think are going to make your transition into this next grade level so much better and so much more fun. There are so many fun things about middle school and high school that to be able to do this is just really going to be, um, it's going to make your uh, your experience in those grade levels so much better. Absolutely. So another important tip we have for you is to be organized. Being organized is very essential to your success at any level. It doesn't matter if you're transitioning from one class, one grade to another, fourth to fifth, from fifth to sixth, from middle school to high school. Organization is key. It's key to success. So when we look at being organized, you want to prepare yourself to study. So if you've gotten all of those supplies that you were supposed to do on your shopping list, then you should have the materials that you need in order to help with that organization and to help with your study skills as well. It's important to have the tools that you need in order to be able to study. So make sure that you set aside good time for studying. There's always going to be time to socialize with your friends and to create those TikToks and, you know, do different things like that in sports. But your studies are essential. So you want to make sure that you set aside time to specifically hone in on your academic skills and make sure that you're getting everything you possibly can out of your courses. You also want to have a separate notebook or space for each class. Again, utilizing those tools that you've purchased from uh, the store in preparation for school. You want to make sure that those notebooks that you have are organized. I encourage you to label them. Um, some teachers even have a color coding system. And so you'll realize that when they ask you to specifically buy a green folder or a red folder, there's a purpose for it. They are helping you to uh, hone in on those uh, organization skills. So it's going to help you organize and it's going to help you with your study skills. So make sure that if at all possible that you adhere to those um, those lists that are sent out to you. If they ask for a specific color, then it's for a specific reason. It's to help with your organization and for you to be successful in class. The next thing is to keep a calendar. Um, of assignments and due dates. This is important. I always encourage my students to keep a calendar in the very front of your folder. And some of you guys are, um, you like to use the digital calendars. And that's fine as well because oftentimes it'll send you a ping or a reminder to your phone. When you have tests that week or when you have a project due, it's very good for you to put it inside your calendar. And if you know that you'll keep up with a digital calendar better, then that's fine. Make sure that you put those assignments inside your digital calendar. You can set it to even give you reminders a day before or a couple of days before, but this is essential in making sure that you have mapped out everything. Knowing that when you're transitioning, especially if you're going from perhaps staying in one or two classes a day to perhaps go rotating to six different teachers a day, then you will definitely want to make sure that you put calendars, uh, put due dates on your calendar so that you can keep up with all of that. It may seem like a lot, but when you practice these organization skills and you put things on your calendar, it will give you those reminders and those updates and you're able to stay right on top of it and be successful. Lastly, come to class prepared with supplies and homework completed. Not doing homework in class, but already completed. And this is going to be key by keeping up with those, uh, those due dates on your calendar. If you know that you have homework that's due the next day, you want to put it in and key it in on your calendar so that you can allocate that time to study and to complete your homework the night before. We know that when we're not prepared, it tends to get us anxious. Um, we get a little frustrated. We're not our best self. We get a little frustrated. So in order for you to be successful at school, you want to be organized. You want to be prepared. You want to study. And you just want to make sure you have everything mapped out and planned out. And you can definitely do that. If you need some assistance with it, know that your teachers are there to help. Your counselors are there to help. So just reach out to any of those trusted individuals, and they're there to help you, not just with academics, but with, with social emotional things, whatever it is that you may need in order to be successful for school. We want you to be organized and be prepared. 
be involved. This is a really important thing um, to make sure that you're involved with the things that are on campus. All right, to be into sports. If you enjoy sports and that's something that you want to do, then that's really important to try out for those teams and to, to get involved in that. Also, band. Band is a wonderful opportunity uh, for scholarships, both sports and bands, a wonderful opportunity for scholarships later on for college and those kind of things. Um, it's such a neat group of people, whether you're involved in whichever one of these, whether you're involved in sports or band or school government or school media or clubs and organization, all of these things allow you to be, you know, your school might have a thousand people in it, but then you get into some of these small groups and all of a sudden your school um, seems so much smaller because your opportunity to have relationships with uh, and have really good close friends becomes greater when you get yourself involved in some of these uh, different events on campus. Um, and again, the sports, band, school government, you know, there, there will have um, elections that will go on, be involved with that or be involved with someone that you feel you want to be able to, you know, uh, to, to elect. Um, the school media, you know, a lot of the schools have like their little TV programs, kind of like we're doing right now. You can be involved in those kind of things or a school newspaper, clubs and organizations. Some of those are usually during the day. Some of them might be right after school. So we just want you to know that being involved allows you to connect and have even greater friendships. So as just like we did last week, me and Ms. Carbo always give you a takeaway or something to do after you've completed the counseling lesson for today. So our challenge to you is to go online and you're, many of you are already online, but check out some of the schools that you'll be transitioning to. Look at perhaps if they have any summer programs, any camps, check out any clubs or organizations that they may have that you might be interested in and go ahead and plan accordingly, knowing that you know some of the things that we discussed today about study skills, about being organized, staying on top of your academics could really have an impact on you being a part of these clubs and organizations and sports. So we want to make sure that you're successful, but also have fun. And all of these things will help prepare you for your future. On next week, we'll be talking about some additional things that can help prepare you for not just you know transitioning from one school to the next but also to be able to be successful after you finish school so right. lastly what we want to do is make sure that you have fun so prior to school we want to get a good night's sleep have a great breakfast and don't stress Everyone, there are thousands of students across not just Mobile County, but other counties and across the entire state that are transitioning from one school to a next or one class to a next, so you're not the only one. So we want you to be organized, be prepared, and have fun. And remember, this is going to be a different year. There's a lot of people that are going to be anxious when they go back to school this year because we've been out for so long. So be the one that steps up, reaches out, and becomes a friend to someone else. Because again, a lot of us are going to be anxious. It's going to be a very different year. So you be the, you be the leader, take leadership roles in your school, and it's going to be a phenomenal new opportunity and experience.